so this is uh, drip irrigation not sure if you can see the water droplets there if done right and I want to encourage you guys to make use of the land you have like I always say this is not a commercial farm this is my village <laughs> Mr. Zim. Today guys I'm uh, greeting you from my village here in Mashingo. Uh, I'm in Chibi district in Mashingo where we are farming tomatoes. Uh, if you go back to my previous video I showed a video where we had just installed the drip pipes and uh, we planted tomatoes at the time and, and here we are our tomatoes are growing and what we've done here is called trellising. You trellis the tomatoes you put these stumps up and then um, you support the tomatoes because a tomato is, is, is a fruit and it grows like um yeah it's a fruit but it doesn't have a very strong stem so you need to support the stem so that it doesn't tip over and you can have your good tomatoes so today i'll be taking you through uh through the field uh just to show you uh you know the progress uh from where we were the last time uh, so that you see what's happening and guys this is um we've got seventeen thousand plants here we've got seventeen thousand plants which uh we are doing and uh, hopefully you have a good yield i don't know if you can see from the back here this is the tomato crop guys um some of the tomatoes have started fruiting as you can see there's some tomato fruit over there here's the tomatoes and like i said we did trellising so trellising is where you support the tomatoes as you can see there's a wire over here so these wires is where you tie your your tomato tree to or your tomato plant you tie it to that wire so that uh, the stems are upright and the drip pipes are running at the bottom as you can see over there those are your drip pipes um, and with, with drip irrigation you have water going on every single plant so that's how it works we are almost on a hectare we, did, we didn't we planted less than a hectare we got 17,000 plants that's uh, on less than a hectare I think it's about three quarters of a hectare where we planted uh, if you plant a whole hectare you can fit about uh, 24,000 plants. We are applying uh, fungicide uh, because tomatoes do get affected by a lot of fungicides so yeah you always have to be aware of what's happening in your field. Today we are applying uh, fungicide, you also use pesticide and so on. We're not yet at that stage where we're doing organic tomatoes. So trellising is going on. Some of the other rows there have not yet been trellised. So yeah, it's, go it's going on. Um, so what we're seeing is that when you run an operation like this, you need around um, nine employees, there are about, you need about nine employees. We've got six and you can really feel that um, they, are quite, uh, they are quite stretched, we're only about six. Uh, but yeah guys, if you, can, if you can afford just nine, uh, we're still doing less than a hectare. I think for a hectare you need about 11 full-time employees uh, when you're doing tomatoes because there's a lot of um, attention to detail which goes in. Every morning you have to uh, take a walk in the field, see what pests are in there, what worms, what insects are in there. Take a look at, uh, at your plant, see uh, what um, what's affecting it. So it's a full-time job. It's not something that I would um, advise that you do over the phone while you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a city, in an office chair somewhere and try to do this over the phone. It's uh, quite a big investment. So today I'm having challenges with the drone guys. I wish I could take some drone shots. In my next video, I will show you when we start harvesting these tomatoes here so you can see you know, how the final product is looking. Uh, maybe I'll be able to share with you the kind of, um, you know, um, like how much it's going for in the market. Because mind you, this is the first time we are doing tomatoes at this scale. It's the first time we're doing it at the scale. So we have a vague idea of how the market is. Um, so when you start selling, I'll give you guys, I'll make another video and I'll give you guys some insight on how, how much you can sell realistically, where to sell, which towns. We're in Mashingo province and our nearest town, the nearest town from, from where I am now 
is uh, Rishawane. So we're likely to start selling in Rishawane as well as Mashingo. Mashingo City is 65Ks away from me right now. And it's a place which, uh, you know, you can drive for just uh, maybe just uh, under an hour. You're in the market and you're already selling. So those are our key markets. But apparently, just from research and asking around, uh, we'll be able to sell these tomatoes as far as Gweru, as far as Chiredzi. And we'll see when, when we... When we harvest we'll see how the market responds and i'll be happy to share that information in case you also want to get into farming but guys farming is not uh, child's play it's 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 a it's, it's a full-time job it's it's a full, it's full time commitment it's not fast money uh this is our second crop of tomatoes our first crop totally flopped it flopped totally uh it had a good yield in terms of um, the number of tomatoes the you no know, the yield of tomatoes it had but once you harvest the tomatoes they would go bad in about 24 hours so we had we made a bad name in the market but we're only starting and we didn't do our research enough research when we were starting out but now we've tried to incorporate um, agronomists um, instead of just relying on google research we've actually uh, incorporated agronomists to come and help us with this and uh, the first time we tried we were using flood irrigation now we're using drip irrigation as you can see and um, even before we harvested I, I can already tell you that we've got less disease than last time and uh, we've got more healthier plants in terms of the germination rate or success rate of seedlings they're quite higher today so when you want to do a project like this uh, do make sure that um, you get the expertise make sure that you consult with people who know and understand um, uh, the agriculture don't be afraid to uh, you know pay out a bit of money because it will affect your final product we tried to save money in the beginning just by doing google, um, google search and planting uh, just using google and we paid we paid a heavy hefty price for it we lost we lost the crop we lost the the product whoever you sell to doesn't come back because then your tomatoes are going bad you know after uh, after after a few days and um, we tried to avoid that this time around so yeah guys uh, take notes take notes learn from other people's mistakes learn from our mistakes <laughs> and when we do well also learn from where we do it right okay <laughs> In addition to farming tomatoes, um, we're also doing cabbage. Now this is a drip irrigation. Water goes um, directly on the plant, so each plant gets water um, individually. In our last crop, we we're using flood irrigation, and we would open up, uh, you know, the water pipe in this canal here. You know, in this canal, and water would run along here, and a lot of the water would be lost through evaporation and some would flow even out of the field so we're using a lot of water uh, just from our past research raising a cabbage from planting until you take it to market you're looking at about a cost of 15 cents per head 15 cents per head yeah and uh, in the market um, sometimes we saw one dollar for three that's about three thirty three 33 cents so it's a product where you can actually maximize and make 100 percent profit but of course you have to manage your costs uh, keep your costs low as low as possible without compromising the quality because you do have to maximize on the fertilizers on the pesticides on the herbicides and so on you do have to maximize on that uh, because the market wants quality but so these are the valves we use these are the drip valves here so the field uh, which i just showed you where we're watering that's the field over there uh, and we have put enough water on that side now we've opened up uh, the other valve and we're starting to water this these other rows over here so one advantage that i'm seeing of uh, drip irrigation is that your, your your labor requirements are much much lower when it comes to drip irrigation because uh, you just go and open a valve uh, for a certain amount of minutes until each crop gets about two liters of, um, per plant and you close the tap you open another tap and uh, that makes it really really easy at the end of the day all our plants are getting uniform amounts of water right plants are getting uniform amounts of water unlike when you use other forms of irrigation uh, water especially when you flood water might be maybe more water on um, certain parts of the field than others compared to uh, no, because of the gradient because water flows you know through gravity so where there's more gradient the water won't sit there and the plants there will starve our flagship crops are cabbage and tomatoes those are flagship crops but if you find that there are other plants or other types of crops that you do better than others i suggest that you stick to those because it's not every crop 
uh, that's going to be good for you. It's like it's like sport. Right? Some people are more talented in swimming, some in football and so on. So find a crop which works for you, a crop which you're really, really good at, but a crop which also uh, is good for your soil type and um, the area, you know, part of the country where you are, whatever. Make sure that uh, you do something that you're passionate about, something that you know how to do well, something uh, which you understand the market. So next to our field of tomatoes, we also have some okra, or what uh, we call derere. But this okra is not for commercial purposes. It's for our own consumption as well as experimentation. And then on my left here, we have another type of crop. Now this crop here is, uh, is a relish for our traditional sadza. It's known as nieve and it just grows by itself guys we did not even plant it We've come to the end of the video all good things have to come to an end guys this is our field i'll see you on the next one when we start harvesting the tomatoes and maybe by there by that time the, the plants would have grown maybe as high as these these trellising poles of, of, over here so yeah guys this is our field we're doing cabbage and tomato those are our flagship products those are our main products we have okra we have a nieve which grows by itself we don't have to plant it don't have to irrigate it it just grows it just does us a favor and decides to grow in our field but yeah guys this is it uh, like comment share subscribe and uh, remember to um, share any more insights which can help us, which you believe can improve our farming. Um, we believe that uh, the learning is continuous and we are always open to learning more every day. But guys, this is it. This is Mr. Zim checking out from Masunga province, Chiwi district. Have a prosperous 2023. Cheers. Ruma, ruma,